Welcome to Embedded Edge with Knitting, a podcast that brings to life the stories behind today's embedded systems, technologies, and products. It's the show where you'll hear from both engineers and executives on some of the most topical news and most pressing challenges in the world of embedded system design. Here's your host, Editor-in-Chief of Embedded.com, Nitin Dahad. Hello, and welcome to this special edition of Embedded Edge with Nitin with a series of interviews from Embedded World 2024 in Nuremberg, Germany. In this podcast, we speak to ST Microelectronics, Micron Technology, SciTime, and Nuvoton. In the first interview, Remy L. Ozan of ST Microelectronics tells Embedded.com more about the launch of the first sub-20 nanometer MCU ever created based on its 18 nanometer FDSOI technology with embedded phase change memory. And he describes the vision that microcontrollers will allow many nodes in industrial, automotive, consumer, and more to become more autonomous. In the second interview, Mike Basker at Micron Technology explains the details of the new automotive grade Micron 4150AT SSD, which claims to be the world's first quad port SSD capable of interfacing with up to four SOCs to centralize storage for software-defined intelligent vehicles. In the third interview, Piyush Savalia of SciTime took time out to tell, us, to tell us more about the launch of its MEMS-based clock system on a chip chorus family of clock generators for AI data center applications. Finally, we caught up with HL Yang president of Nuvoton to get more background on the company and explain more about its new M433 series MCUs featuring an ARM Cortex M4F core with DSP and FPU extensions. But here's a a message from one of our partners. Uh, So uh, this is from Hardware Pioneers Max 2024, which is happening on May the 28th and 29th in London. Prepare to embark on an electrifying journey into the future of electronics at Hardware Pioneers Max 2024 on May the 28th and 29th in London. With over 3,000 visitors and 100 plus exhibitors joining worldwide, Hardware Pioneers Max 2024 is where you take your engineering skills to the next level. Head to hardwarepioneers.com and use the code PARTNER50 to get 50% off your ticket. Okay, so let's get straight to my first interview. So I asked Remy L. Uzan of ST Microelectronics to explain the background and significance of the new 18 nanometer FDA SOI technology microcontrollers. In the, in the context of, um, uh, of what we've announced two weeks ago on the 18, it was, um, th- th- there are many things attached to 18 that I, I need to describe to you. So we've made this announcement. It, it happens to be indeed the first sub-20 nano uh, uh, MCU ever created, okay? Uh, but it comes with much more than just this uh, marketing tagline. Um, <laughs> first off, um, uh, uh, here, uh, um, it's FDSOI based, okay? So, um, uh, you know, as you remember, you know, uh, FDSOI transistors, they have um, an excellent electrostatic uh, behavior, uh, um, uh, uh, as well as um, what you could say a very impressive low mismatch properties, uh, which makes them, which makes FDSOI superb for ultra low power designs. And the other thing that you um, you have is uh, you have the ability with back biasing to offer a lot of flexibility between how you design for power optimization. So that's another advantage that uh, that we have with um, with FDSOI. And and the last one, which is very specific to our uh, industrial knitting, is that actually uh, in our case we we are natively supporting 3.3 volt. Uh, 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 IOs. Uh, it's important in the context of um, of um, of industrial because um, um, reliability matters a lot. You, you know, when I look at our customers in industrial, they are very much uh, like an automotive customers. You know, you sign up for 10, 15 years. The mission profile they have is very aggressive. Um, minus 40 plus 150. Uh, they have cycling and retention requests for both um, code and uh, data uh, memory that is 
very aggressive, uh, aggressive as in, in a good way, very uh, uh, conservative. So um, you, you, the 3.3 volt IO is, 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 is a big deal um, in the overall um, equation. The second aspect we have here is the fact that it's not only 18 FDSOI, uh, it's also actually leveraging PCM. Now, PCM is, uh, stands for phase change memory. Um, as you know, uh, um, the more you advance in the lithography, uh, the, the less the traditional flash technology become, uh, 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 be, become an, an option. And that's the reason why from 28 nano onwards, everybody has migrated away from flash. And, and there are few options. So you have what we call MRAM, uh, which stands for magnetic RAM. And you have also what's called RERAM, which stands for resisting uh, RAM. Alors, what's the value of PCM here? Uh, the value of PCM is really its density. Uh, uh, um, when you look at RERAM and MRAM, uh, uh, um, the, the bipolar activation is such that um, the, the current will flow in both directions. So you need to have a, um, uh, you need to have a, um, a specific transistors and a specific size of transistor to be able to manage RERAM or MRAM technology. PCM is unidirectional. The net net of that is essentially that um, it allows you to have way more dense design for a given amount of flash size. Okay. Well, Alors, where all of that become interesting? <laughs> because mm. I will tell you uh, something which is may not help ST or may help ST. I don't know because I cannot glaze the future. Um, it's one of those things where the technology was created with a product vision in mind. This is the value of being an IDM. At least we can tune the mm. stuff ourselves. Um, and here, here is a vision we have. <laughs> That's uh, going to be the interesting piece. We have a vision that... Uh, uh, microcontrollers will allow really many nodes uh, uh, in industrial, in automotive, in, in consumer, whatever, many nodes to become more autonomous, to become yes. more autonomous and to become very low power. And we believe in that context that AI will become a first class citizen in the context of microcontrollers. Mm. Now, where is the beauty coming from is Obviously, if we could have a technology that allows us to run AI efficiently because we can store many parameters in a very efficient manner, and we have the right AI architecture leveraging FDSOI, we could make all the next generation MCUs very efficient. You don't need, a, you, you may have, you know, a, a spectrum of compute capability, not all the products need the same, but we could make AI essentially a de facto features in all microcontrollers moving forward. Uh, uh, let me tell you, Nitin, I am not going to talk to you about sexy use cases. My, my use cases are not sexy. I, I want to phrase it now, um, but I will give you some examples of use cases um, uh, that is happening today. Uh, today, so I'm not talking about the future. It's happening today. We have use cases which relate to um, uh, uh, which relate to um, um, anomaly detection. So we are working with many industrial makers uh, in the context of being able to have a multimodal uh, 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 machine learning implementation, allowing them because of vibration, because of temperatures, uh, because of the speed of a rotor, a rotor, for example, to ascertain you know the health of the uh, uh, of the device uh, that are actually supplying to their customers. Um, we are right now working on use cases for the automotive industry where you will be able to have a virtual temperature sensor just trying to go and uh, estimate the temperature of the rotor uh, by multiple parameters, one of them being the external temperature, and being able then to ascertain the health of your um, electric motor in your car. This is happening as we speak. Um, we have examples of uh, uh, that we have announced recently with Panasonic of now the ability to prevent, you know, a flat on your bike uh, uh, by uh, also asserting, actually, uh, uh, and inferring uh, the behavior of your tire. And 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 this is, and, and I have on and on, uh, maybe the most sexy example I'll be able to provide, I'm sorry, it's not sexy, but that's all the best I can provide, <laughs> is for the washing machine. Um, we have actually put a reference design together. This one is very interesting. Um, it's um, also uses a six-axis 
uh, mem sensor from ST together with one of our microcontrollers. And we do two things. First off, we will be able to very accurately estimate the weight of the clothes. And then we'll be able actually to manage the drum in a way that is not going to go and tap into the outer shell. Um, as a matter of fact, the combination of the two allows you to consume 10 to 40% less detergent and water. And in the context of, you know, the world we live in, it's been a big bonanza uh, for our customers. And all of that is running on a simple STM32G0 uh, 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 microcontrollers. But Nitin, I have to tell you, we have gazillions of those use cases. Uh, really, it's it's really popping up now. Uh, uh, it has exploded. Uh, we had a strong collaboration with NVIDIA that we put in place 18 months ago uh, 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 with Deepu and I. Uh, obviously, that helped us you know, to, uh, to bring a lot of development patterns from NVIDIA into the world of embedded and industrial. That has helped. We also have tools that allows non-data scientists to go and Come, come along uh, on the journey. And, and now there is an explosion. So uh, I'm looping back to 18, uh, FDSY, P18, this process. If the vision of the world is actually more and more of the node will have more and more, uh, will, bring, will drive more and more autonomy um, uh, through AI, I have to tell you that I think F18, 18 FDSY technology of ST microelectronics will be for the decade to come a game changer platform for the industry. I'm talking to Mike Basker of uh, Micron. He's a VP of uh, Embedded Products and Systems at uh, uh, Micron. Uh, hello, Mike. Hello, Nitin. So, uh, uh, Micron this week uh, announced at Embedded World a uh, uh, new um, quad port SSD for automotive, and it's, a, it's industry first, but it's got some, some interesting uh, uh, new capabilities. Uh, just give us a quick overview, please, Mike. Yeah, thank you. Very happy to. So, yeah, we were excited this week to announce our new 4150AT SSD. This is a, an SSD that's specifically targeted for automotive and uh, really the next generation of centralized architecture for automotive. So it has a number of unique features versus uh, drives that you might see in other places. It's a quad port SSD, meaning that it can interface simultaneously to up to four different SOCs. And this is extremely important as uh, you know the next generation of vehicles is looking at high powered IVI processors, ADAS processors, telematics, comms modules, black box. And so they have the, the need and really the opportunity to simultaneously interface to one common pool of storage. Um, this drive is available in a, a BGA package, which is, which is a little bit different than most SSDs that would come in a uh, like an M.2 or E1S. And again, it's indicative of some of the specialized needs of automotive, where that shock and vibration in the vehicle really takes advantage of a solder down solution. Um, so again, the, the rugged needs of automotive, both from thermal capabilities, um, the board level reliability, and the usage models in the space. Now, I, I think... Um one of the key things is is um, around that you know, because uh, the the move to zonal architectures and the centralization of ECUs. So that's why you're getting this this need to go uh, more with this approach of sh uh, having that shared memory. Is that right? Yeah, that's exactly right. So you know, in the, uh, today's architectures, uh, each of those domains or SOCs that I mentioned earlier would have their own dedicated storage device, maybe an EMC, a UFS, or uh, or a single port SSD. And so, uh, you know, uh, our solution here with the 4150 essentially lets you combine, consolidate up to what would otherwise be four separate storage devices into one single storage device. So creating really this common pool of storage, which is far more efficient for the overall system flexibility. You know, it eliminates what we're calling stranded capacity, where otherwise one of these devices often has some unused capacity. Um, so, it, it, for example, if you have a 32 gigabyte EMMC, the code footprint might only be, you know, 8 or 16 gigabyte. Having that one common pool now lets other domains, other SOCs take advantage of that unused capacity. So we're really excited about the system efficiencies of this new device. Uh, and the, um, the, the quad port, I think there's that dynamic allocation as well between uh, of that capacity, is that right? Yeah, so we have a number, uh, it can support anywhere from one to four SOCs. So uh, essentially has four lanes that can be 
uh, split, for example, uh, you know, all four to a single SOC or two each to two different SOCs. So as you know, car makers look at their future architectures and the number of domains and SOCs they might want to consolidate into a single storage, there's a lot of flexibility both for how they begin as well as um, you know, where they might end up in the future with further consolidation. And the device itself has a number of features that help to uh, isolate and provide system performance benefits. It has what's called a SRIOV, which is Single Root IO Virtualization. So in a typical system, this is handled at the system level by part of the software stack. Um, the 4150 actually has this embedded in the device itself, essentially letting you offload the, the functionality that's controlling the, you know, the IO logic to the, to the storage mapping. Um, providing anywhere from 40% to even over 2x system performance uh, in the benefit. So again, there's a lot of flexibility here for, as well as performance benefits for the car makers. And one of the other things I think I noticed from your presentation earlier is um, the high endurance, uh, and you've got a, an extra option on, on that. Just explain that a little bit, please. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that. So, you know, it's, it's typical to see a lot of different um, code and data applications and usage models in a device today. And especially as we look at this um, shared pool of storage all together in the SSD, it's going to be even more so. And so one of the challenges of data today is particularly for um, data that is uh, refreshed quite frequently. So uh, the storage devices today are typically based on what's called a triple level cell uh, NAND technology or TLC. Um, which typically has in the range of about 3,000 endurance cycles. This is the number of times that the, that the NAND can be written and overwritten. Um, so, uh, but there is data that's already stored in there today that requires uh, more frequent use than that. So these might be um, various uh, HD maps, as an example, or other things that are refreshed. And so already today, some solutions utilize what's called an SLC mode. So they can take the SLC, configure that, uh, in, take the TLC and configure it to an SLC mode. You lose... Uh, uh, one third of the density or you lose two thirds of the density, but you get this benefit of much higher write cycle count. We've extended that even uh, a, a new level in this 4150, creating uh, a third category called high endurance SLC. And this actually lets you get up to 50x the number of uh, endurance cycles, the write cycles that you would get in that TLC mode. And this is particularly targeted at things like black box, um, where you're constantly writing you know, a set of data for the, the driving conditions uh, and uh, various information from the vehicle. Or similarly, you know, some of this uh, surveillance mode, sentry mode type of monitoring that's done on the vehicle. So they really look to take advantage of um, these kinds of applications with this new high endurance mode. I mean, final question. I mean, uh, this is Quadport. I think you said it's first for the automotive, but it's actually first you know, in the industry for any application. Is that right? Yeah, that's absolutely right. We're you know quite uh, quite happy to bring that to market and just you know a little bit today. So uh, dual port is actually quite common in uh, data center applications, and as Micron, obviously that's a big market where we already have a play. So we were able to take that existing technology and really extend that from the dual port to the quad port. And it may be a little bit uh, surprising to many people that automotive would be the first to drive this kind of innovation. But it's really you know, founded on uh, this centralization that I mentioned earlier, where you have these different domains that are operating, multiple different SOCs handling the IVI, EDAS, uh, the communications, telemetry, black box type of applications. So um, these various functions, because there's uh, multiple that are physically co-located in these centralized architectures, can take advantage of, of up to all four ports uh, in that device. Well, Mike, thank you very much. Uh, so happy to be here, and I look forward to coming back again. This is Nitin Dahad. I'm talking to Piyush Savellia, uh, VVP of Marketing at SciTime. Piyush, hello. Hey, man. How are you? I'm good. So uh, you are uh, when you're launching a new uh, new series of products. Uh, tell us a little bit about what they are. Sure. So historically, what we've done is we've launched oscillators, MEMS oscillators. This time we are expanding into the clocking category, and that uh, basically gives us more coverage in the market, more SAM expansion, and solves problems for customers. So that's what we are doing right now. And this new product is called Chorus. It's basically a family of what we call clock generators, and it's targeted at data center, AI, and server, and those kind of applications. What, um, I mean, what, what was the rationale for doing this, I guess? Uh, ultimately, it's all about solving problems for customers. Look, everybody's like developing new systems really fast because this is a very rapidly growing market. And so in this kind of environment, the more complete solutions we give to customers, the better off we are. Because there are fundamental problems that they're gonna face, and that was the rationale behind it. 
And, and does this sit alongside then the other elements that you have? So, uh, and, uh, and then are there a family of uh, products coming out? Yes, it does. So, uh, we have been expanding into the clock side of, thing, of, of devices for now a couple of years now. We actually acquired the products from Aura Semiconductor last year, which was an Indian-based company to build out a portfolio. And this is a homegrown development. This is not based on the Aura technology. It's all based on sight time technology. But again, the idea is the more value you provide to customers, the more problems you solve for them, the better it is for them. And so Chorus is the first product. Uh, what, what, uh, what are the parameters? So uh, amongst the key parameters, uh, jitter is one. Uh, the lower the jitter, the better the system performance. Uh, we have uh, two, two kinds of devices in this family. One is 150 femtoseconds of jitter, which is good for 400 to 800 G Ethernet, for example, 150 femtoseconds of jitter. The other one is a 70 femtosecond jitter device, which is good for 800G to 1.6 terabits per second Ethernet. Of course, all these devices are compliant with PCIe 1 through 6, and so it gives the customers choices about what to do. And the, most, the best part about this is that we integrate the MEMS inside. Most other people have the quartz resonator outside. We pull it in. So you're eliminating noise issues and all the other issues that you're gonna see. You're saving up to three weeks of design time and uh, you're also saving them space. And is it, is, is it pro program programmable? Absolutely, everything we do is programmable, so yes, absolutely. So people, you can configure the frequency, you can configure the voltage, you can configure the output types. Are they differential, are they single-ended, all that stuff. And how is that done? Is that through uh, the um, manufacturing or, or do you do that sort of on the, on, on the fly in the system? Both. Okay. So we can do it at the manufacturing level. We also have an I2C or SPI interface going into the chip, so you can configure it on your own too. And, and the reason for these products is basically uh, driven by the data center uh, requirements, is that right? Yeah, I mean, people are basically incorporating new features into servers, into NIC cards, into switches and things like that. And they need an integrated clock generator device that's gonna provide all the clocking in the system. So that was the rationale, that's what we are doing. We've already started sampling. We've sampled about 10 to 15 customers so far with more to come. So right now it's still strategic. General sampling will be in the second half of this year. So the customers are hyperscalers or, uh, or are you looking at some of further down the ecosystem? Cloud service providers, hyperscalers, uh, networking equipment manufacturers, all of these types. Uh, and uh, what, what are the other things that we should know about? I think that covers it all. That's the main reason for why I'm here. I'm launching this product, introducing this, and uh, we think it's gonna be a good one. And in the general market right now, you're seeing, you said um, uh, your oscillators, I think, are sort of 90% of your, your revenue right now. Um, wh where do you see Chorus uh, taking this into? Well, so it's gonna go through its normal design cycle times and all that, right? So it, it, typically it takes about a year to design these products in and then they start ramping into revenue. So that's where we see it happening. So the meaningful revenue contribution is gonna be sometime next year on this. Well, Piyush, thank you very much. At Embedded World here, and I'm, I'm at the Nuvoton booth, and I'm speaking to HL Young, of, uh, president of Nuvoton. Uh, hello, HL. Uh, good, uh, nice to see you. Yes, and hello to everyone. So, um, tell me a little bit about Nuvoton. Okay, uh, Nuvoton is a, com a, three, a 30 years old company, but we merged the uh, uh, Panasonic Semiconductor in 2020, and now it's moving back to the growth chain. Here at the uh, uh, show, you've actually uh, launched, I think you said your, your green technology strategy, but also a new microcontroller. Uh, just give us a little flavor of what, uh, what those are. Okay. Uh, we released the new product series M2 uh, L31 series yesterday uh, at the Embedded World, and we feature three major functions. First one is that uh, we offer the new technology called Rerun, which can offer the uh, low power and also easy access to the memory. When you program in a page, uh, the programming time is 65% uh, less than the traditional flash. Second, we offer the new security technology, which we call the dual protection. So we combine the software 
and also hardware protection uh, technology to protect the customer's valuable data. And the third one is that uh, the ultra low power. We offer six power mode that suit for different operation modes for customers. And, 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 and this is part of your green technology strategy, you said, I think, which is basically focused on three areas, which is low power, uh, high, high power efficiency, and uh, fast wake up. Is that right? Uh, yes. Uh, we are engaged to the green technology uh, for the sustainable ecosystem. So we provide uh, the uh, green technology based on our silicon expertise uh, for accumulated for the past 30 years, and we would like to offer to all the customer for usage. And uh, what, what are your key markets? I think it, it covers like what most people do, but uh, are there any particular areas which are strong for you? Yes, I think for Newmoton today, uh, industry and automotive uh, take 45% of our revenue, mm. and 80, 18% for computing, 18% uh, for consumer. So we have a very broad coverage for all kinds of applications. What are the key uh, challenges you're seeing uh, in the market but for your customers? Mm. I think there are two major challenges. One is the green technology chain. So everyone talking about the carbon nature, neutral. So this is what we also focus on, how to make our offering to become helpful for customers to achieve this. The second one is the regional conflict over the constraint. So uh, we're talking about the G2 uh, issues. So we are trying to make our supply chain to be more resilient. This is our challenge. And what are the plans to make that resilient? Uh, actually, we set up a dual track strategy. So the first track is the China for China. We have a very high uh, visibility in China area in the past 20 years. And we will now withdraw in one night. So we will create the China uh, supply chain. So we call, uh, everyone call that China for China. And all the second track is the international track. So we will offer the international customer the non-China supply chain. So this is what we set in and try to uh, improve uh, in this year. It's, a, it's still a great challenge. And uh, what, uh, what about in, on the product side, uh, what else can we expect from Nuvoton in the next few months? Uh, I think uh, this year we, will, we have three major uh, topics. One is that we uh, launch a new MA35 product series, which is aimed at a high performance uh, com computation. And the second one is the M55 product series, which is aimed to create an AI-ready platform for customer to adopt any new kind of AI algorithm. The third one is we already talking about M2, uh, M2 Aero 31, which is the ultra low power uh, M2 series. So these three, this will be the three major uh, products uh, we will focus and to, to introduce to customers. Well, uh, HL, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. So, that brings us to the end of this episode. That was Embedded Age with Nitin, and I'm Nitin Dahad. Thanks for listening, and see you next time.